the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, I hope we're supposed to get some rain today, that much-needed rain that we need. These last couple of days, it's been extremely hot. But let us remember that we are to be people of holiness. We are to do good acts of charity so that we never experience the heat and the hot that is in hell. So that's a way to look at it. So hopefully this rain will cool things down on this very day. And today we are going to pray our Mass setting is going to be for those in public office. We think about all those who serve our communities, our state, our nation, those around the world, but all those who have uh, authority over somebody, and we pray for them, the guidance and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. So to prepare our hearts to celebrate the sacred liturgy of the Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins, and let us ask God to send the love, mercy, and forgiveness that he's willing to give us down upon us. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us gather all of our prayers together into one. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sit back and be attentive to the Word of God. A reading from the second book of Kings. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent envoys to Hezekiah with this message. Thus shall you say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, Do not let your God, on whom you rely, deceive you, by saying that Jerusalem will not be handed over to the king of Assyria. You have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all other countries. They doomed them. Will you then be saved? Hezekiah took the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then he went up to the temple of the Lord and spreading it out before him, he prayed in the Lord's presence, O Lord God of Israel, enthroned upon the cherubim, you alone are God over all the kingdoms of the earth. You, you have made the heavens and the earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and listen. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which we have sent to talk the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and cast their gods into the fire. They destroyed them because they were not to gods but the work of human hands, wood and stone. Therefore, O Lord our God, save us from the power of this man, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Then Isaiah, son of Amaz, sent this message to Hezekiah. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, in answer to your prayer for help against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have listened. This is the word the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, laps you to scorn, the virgin daughter Zion. Behind you she wags her head, daughter Jerusalem. For out of Jerusalem, for out of Jerusalem shall come a remnant, and from Mount Zion survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, Thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not reach this city, nor shoot an arrow at it, nor come before to the shield, nor cast up siege works against it. He shall return by the same way he came, without entering the city, says the Lord. 
I will shield and save the city for my own sake, and for the sake of my servant David. That night the angel of the Lord went forth and struck down 185,000 men in the Assyrian camp. So Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, broke camp and went back home to Nineveh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain fares to heights, is the joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, the recesses of the north, is the city of the great king. God is with her castles, renowned is he as a stronghold. God upholds his city forever. O God, we ponder your mercy within your temple. As your name, O God, so also your praise reaches to the end of the earth. Of justice, your right hand is full. God holds the city forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, or throw your pearls before swine, lest they trample them underfoot and turn and tear you to pieces. Do to others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road broad that leads to destruction. And those who enter through it are many. How narrow the gate and constructed the road that leads to life. And those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the theme of today's readings remind us that the gate to the way of life is narrow. But God's grace is there to help us. Jesus fulfills the law. And we hear him teaching and modeling the way to perfection. You and I have that opportunity to be perfect. We may never achieve that opportunity because only Jesus is perfect. But we have the opportunity to strive towards perfection. And that's what Jesus wants and expects of all of us. Following Jesus ensures that we do not get lost on the broad road as we hear and that road which leads to destruction. For through the gate that we enter, the way of life is narrow. It is no way impossible to enter, though. You and I may have struggles, and we may get down, but Jesus, if we look to him for guidance, he will guide us along the way to help us to reach the kingdom. Today we pray for all of our officials, especially our elected officials, we are reminded, though, that the authority which we all live by comes from God and God alone. But we elect officials to help us, to guide us, to help make laws so that we can live as a humane and structured society. Sometimes, though, people get lost on the path. They forget that they represent the people who they are entrusted to. And so, my brothers and sisters, today we pray that all elected officials will be guided by the Holy Spirit. But in order for them to be guided by the Holy Spirit, there must be some action from you and I. We must pray for our elected officials. But more importantly, we must hold our elected officials accountable. Many times when we speak about abortion, for example, especially here in New York State, we often forget that we are the people the chosen, who elect our public officials into office. So my brothers and sisters, we must do our own part if we want to make the society a better place. If we truly believe in a, the right to life, then it's you and I who have that chance to change it. It is you and I who have the opportunity to make the culture in our society 
a loving and merciful and forgiving culture, especially during this time when we see so many statues being torn down. But here is the, here's the thing. If we tear down these statues, what are we teaching the next generation? Because all they're going to do is they're going to look at a platform that's empty. Nobody's standing there. They've torn down the marker, the person. We must remember that each and every one of us are sinners. Only Jesus Christ was born into this world with pure perfection. And he took on our humanity. And so my brothers and sisters, as we try to live lives of holiness, we cannot erase the past because the past is what helps us to a brighter future. When we try to erase the past, all we are doing is asking Satan to have that dark cloud shine upon us. If we do not learn from the past, then we are not going to inspire to anything in the eyes of God. You and I have the opportunity to not only pray for our elected officials, those in public office, but we are to look at our conscience and make sure our elected officials represent you and I. If they do not represent you and I, then we have to make a change. What happened 40 and 30 and maybe 20 years ago in our society when we elected these our officials may have been for the common good at that point, but maybe they are not leading our people into a society that we want. Right now we have people standing up against the law and forming their own little societies, if you will, where they control and rule a certain part of the land. Is that really what we are about in the United States of America? I think not. Our brothers and sisters have died year after year, decade after decade, and through centuries, they have died and shed their blood so that you and I would have freedom in this very land. We have made mistakes in our country. And as Bishop Scharfenberger has said, racism is the biggest sin in America. And you and I can change that. You and I can make the future a brighter place. But if we try to erase what has happened in the past, and not learn from those experiences, then the future will not be bright. That is to say, what if you and I forget about Jesus Christ? Forget that he died and suffered upon the cross. Yes, he was a good minister. Yes, he preached the word of the gospel. Yes, he was about forgiveness and mercy. But all of us should be about those things. If we ignore the fact that Jesus came into the world to have for, for us to have salvation in the kingdom of God, if we erase that fact, then we erase everything that Jesus stood for. Brothers and sisters, it is a time for us to reflect on our own conscience and how do we want our country to be for generations to come. We must pray for our young ones that they will be able to live in a society like you and I have been able to, a place where it's filled with love and hope for the future. Let us continue to hold strong to our faith. Let us never allow anybody to strangle us once again to practice our faith. Let us never allow the Roman soldiers to hold tight the stone which held Jesus in the tomb. Jesus rolled back that tomb. You and I are going to roll back the tombs in our society so that the risen, the risen Christ will be able to shine on every street and every corner. You and I are Jesus Christ to our brothers and sisters. It is time for you and us, to, for you and I to stand up, to speak about the gospel and to spread the good news and never allow the darkness which we have experienced in the past to ever overshadow us again. It is the Holy Spirit that gives us that courage. So let us continue to pray that the Holy Spirit will dwell in our hearts for not only our future, but for generations to come. Let us bring our petitions to the Lord. <clears throat> For all in the church who teach the faith, may the perfection of God's grace be upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For President Trump, 
for Governor Cuomo, and for all elected officials throughout our nation, throughout our state, and in our local community. May the Holy Spirit guide them in justly serving those whom they represent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit, may the Lord, who is healer of all, bring them comfort and relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Mary's Parish, may God's generous love strengthen us in charity and flow through us in all we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died this day, for those who will die this day, and for those who have nobody to pray for them, we pray that through the mercy of God, that their souls and the souls of all of the faithful departed may rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Allison Potton and Carol Riddle. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for our Holy Father, for Bishop Scharfenberger and all bishops, and for myself and all priests who are trying to teach the faith that the Holy Spirit will always be in our hearts, especially during the times of struggle, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear and answer the prayers we bring before you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you. Through the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Through the vine, the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual tree. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here nourish the human race with the food and renew it with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustained they provide, the sustenance that they provide may never fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirits. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world, and you have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image, and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made, and forever praise you in your mighty words through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. By setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out. For you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the, the world, provide your cross and resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs of eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, our Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the world. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul to you, and the body of Christ can be saved for eternal life. And the blood of Christ can be saved for eternal life. Let us make our spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I can't at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And for those of you who are keeping track, I realized I did forget the entrance in the communion antiphon. I'll try to be more um, aware of that. So I know my aunt's going to text me sometime today. You know. <laughs> but through the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel, let us pray for peace in our hearts, peace within our families, and the protection against Satan and evil in the nation. St. Michael the Archangel, defend, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking with his souls. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray 
for us. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of this table of unity and charity, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that through the work you have given us to do, we may sustain our life on earth and trustfully build up your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.